Today I'm back working on the Boynton and Plummer Shaper and the challenge is to turn this collection of parts into a working machine. There's a one particular job which needs doing before that can happen and that is a bushing for the drive cone pulley. This isn't actually the original cone pulley, it was found by the previous owner and it is an extremely close match but the bore is ever so slightly too big so I need to make a bushing to go on the end of the drive shaft for that. But before we do that, I need to address a concerning problem. And that is the fact that the drive shaft itself is actually bent. And I don't know why, but I was halfway through assembling it and I noticed that it was wobbling around. So before I go any further, I need to sort that out. I took the piece over to the lathe um, because in this situation the best thing to do sometimes is to put it in a three jaw chuck and give it in a spin so that you can see if there's anything visually going on and if I bring you in here to have a look the chuck is on the outside bearing reference and this is the drive pulley area and it looks okay until we get to the very end and it definitely isn't okay and I believe the bend is around here which is surprising considering that's inside the body of the machine there is a little score mark I don't know if that's related to when it happened or it could have happened when it was kicking around in storage what I think I'm going to do is take it over to the fly press and give it a bit of persuasion and see if I can improve things I'm definitely not going to be able to fix this perfectly but we should be able to get it very close so that it's uh, nice and functional again. So I've got my high spot marked on the work which I was able to determine in the lathe. I also rolled it on a flat surface and checked for daylight underneath. I've got two bits of uh, hardwood here and also a copper block and I'm going to use those three points to apply some pressure in a very specific location and hopefully straighten this out. Now at this stage when we're getting, a, getting really close but still too far off it gets very difficult to judge by eye where the bend is so I use a rule to rock on the bend and you can see just in the bottom right corner here that light which is coming and going that's the rule rocking so I can I can see it's very hard to see on the camera but I can see where the ruler is rocking and put a mark there which gives me a place to do my bend after a good five or six passes of toing and froing from the lathe to the fly press this is what we are looking like now you can see visually against the dead center in the tailstock that is a lot better than it was uh, there is still some run out so i don't think it's it's dead straight but we're looking at comparative run out here remember because the other end is only in a three jaw it's not a hundred percent concentric using a DTI here is kind of chasing precision that would be that I don't really have anyway on this part so I think this is probably as good as we can get it that's a lot better than it was isn't it I'm quite pleased with how that went to be honest um, I think that'll do lovely Next job, of course, is to make the bush I mentioned uh, to fit the cone pulley onto this diameter here. Uh, we are super close to getting this machine to run, so bear with us. One more job and we'll be away. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's a funny looking bush, but let me explain. The bush needs to be three inches long with a bore of one inch and 60 thou and an outside diameter of 1.125 inches which only leaves it with a wall thickness of 32 and a half thousandths which is about 0.8 mil very thin indeed i'm going to run the bore first while i have rigidity from the thick walls of the stock and then turn the outside diameter afterwards 
This little piece that I'm making now will fit into the finished bore and allow me to use tailstock support when I turn the outside diameter, which will prevent chatter and hopefully stop it from collapsing upon itself as I reach the finished size. got the uh, the bore to size now um, which means it's time to tear down this lovely setup I do like a fixed steady now the part that requires the most rigidity is done it's time to tackle the OD and the overall wall thickness of this part is going to be really quite thin which is why I wanted to do the bore first and now we get to use the little puck I made earlier which fits into that bore and gives us a nice place for a center so we can turn the OD and hopefully have all the rigidity in the world.
That is an incredible fit. I could not be more pleased. It's time to do some assembly now, and I'm gonna start with the saddle. And the screw that we made in the last video, this bronze nut. The saddle won't actually fit on with the nut in place. We have to get it positioned. The screw comes in from the top. Now I'll leave that loose because there's no way of aligning it rotationally. We have to wait for this screw to come in. What's going on there then? Oh, can you spot the problem? This pulley, which obviously isn't original, as I mentioned before, the uh, the rim is fouling on the over, on the support there. I hadn't noticed that. Bugger! I was so close as well. It looks like 
we've got to quickly go back to the lathe. <laughs> And last but not least, we have a rather nice flywheel to go on the end. And it's helpfully provided with a handle, which means, ladies and gentlemen, can be run by hand. So I think we can call that a success. I've had great fun working on this machine. A couple of basic fixes. I could have got a lot further with the restoration, but I just wanted to get it running and have a little go. All of the parts that were lying around everywhere at the beginning of the video have now gone back onto the machine, except this one, of course, which is the only part that's left over. And that is the bit that I replaced. And if you haven't seen that video, go and watch it now. That was a bit of a roller coaster. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.